I had no idea where my husband was. And I found myself saying, what do I do now? Who do I call? Mm. Who, who do I trust with this information? And there was no one. There was, there was really no one that I, that I could think of that had any, and, and in that moment, the only thing I could do was turn to the foundation that I had been building with my relationship with God for the, since I had been 16. And now here I am all of these years later. And I picked up my scripture and I, and I tend to talk out loud to God. And so I said, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to look in your word and I'm going to find something to help me know what to do and find some comfort. And when I opened up my Bible to where I had been reading and the next, I was at the end of one uh, book of the Bible and I was starting the next one I opened up to the next book of the Bible and it was James and I start out with James 1 1 consider it all joy when you encounter various trials knowing that the testing of your faith mm. and all of a sudden I slammed the book and I threw it on the couch and I said really God that's your solution for me I'm supposed to consider this all joy my life is falling apart and I'm supposed to consider it all joy and I just felt this peace come over me and it felt like I just, I just heard and, and just sensed God saying, I'm there, I'm there, I'm here, I'm here, keep reading. And I open it back up and verse four in the message says, and your faith life will be on display for everyone to see. And I said, I just said again out loud into the room, if this is your plan that you want me to show people how you show up and love on me, even when life is falling apart, then okay. And I will tell you, Bob, it's not easy. Some days it's hard. Some days it's, it's just, it's, it's so, it tortures you to try to figure out how you're going to do this. But the book came because I couldn't find resources hmm. and I couldn't find anyone who could help me. And counselors would say, I went to a Christian counselor and after the second session, he said, I don't want to keep taking your money and I got nothing. Wow. <laughs> One day, my best friend looked at me after about two years into the process. She said, would you stop looking for help and just start being the help? Hmm. And I wrote the book. So your husband, having been a pastor mm -hmm. and going through this anxiety and depression, really to the point that it became so intense that he was dealing with suicide. And I would imagine that we have people listening even to us today that are either in that position mm -hmm. or they are like you married to someone yeah. that is in that position. So how was your husband as someone who is a, or was a pastor, someone in the ministry, was he attempting to find some biblical solutions? to his issues both of us really really leaned into our relationship with the lord mm. both of us he still to this day both of us lean into our relationship with the lord we both know that there's something there's something chemically um maybe chemically maybe um maybe genetically wrong with him uh, i discovered after this happened that there were some things that were going had been in his family that i had not been aware of that helped us as we were trying to find medication. He eventually got on some medication, a different medication that a family member had suggested had been helpful for them. And I think, I think that for us, it wasn't so much leaning into our Christian faith because it just continued where we were when it happened. Mm. I mean, of course, we're still trying to heal and adjust to the circumstances that we're, we're dealing with. I think it was more okay how do we how do we talk about this because it's not something that we want to talk about that people want to talk about and and so we he actually wrote the foreword to the book uh -huh. he wrote mm. the foreword to the book so from the very first page you know he knows and he told me when we when i told him i was doing it he's like you write it you be transparent these things happened and I want them to tell, I want you to tell people that not only can you love somebody through this, but that you, there are things that can help you, um, help you survive. And I want you to tell them how you survive and how wow. we stay married. 45 years, Bob, we've been married for 45 years and I am as committed to him now as I was the day that I said I do. Maybe even more because I see, I see the value in the hard work hmm. of just standing by in the hard times.